Jessica. I came out to the woods today to talk about um, the subject of coconut oil on the HCG diet and whether it's okay or not. Um, a lot of people do use coconut oil on HCG. Um, I personally don't anymore and I just want to talk about it today because it's a question that I get often. So you guys know that I am, I always go into detail on every subject. I'm, I'm not good at paring things down, um, but I know you're all busy. So I'm going to give you just a brief, um, a brief answer. <laughs> and then I'm going to go into detail about why I feel the way I do. So um, as far as coconut oil on HCG, um, I don't personally feel that at this time there's enough proof um, for me to feel comfortable using it. Uh, my concern is that while some people do report greater weight loss while using coconut oil, um, I'm concerned about where that weight's coming from. I just, I don't have proof that that extra weight loss is coming from fat. And if it's not coming from fat, the worry is, um, what is it coming from? I, I just, I'm concerned that it's coming from excess muscle loss. So for me, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, you know, the whole point of this protocol is to reach a healthy body composition, which means a good ratio of muscle versus fat on your body. You want to maintain it long term. And so, like I said, I'd rather be safe than sorry. And until there's more proof, um, I, I wouldn't personally recommend it or do it myself. If I ever do get more information that really proves that it's, um, that it doesn't, you know, cause muscle loss or that it doesn't harm your fat loss, I will let you guys know right away. So that's kind of my little brief synopsis. If you want to stay with me for the rest of um, this discussion, I'm going to talk about why I feel that way. So I do have some notes. I hope you guys don't mind that I've started. I've started having more notes lately on some of these articles that I'm writing ended up being like four pages long and it's just I can't, I can't remember it all without looking so I often edit out a lot of me looking down but here and there just to keep things simple and not take forever to record you'll just see me referring to my notes. So anyway um, first of all let's talk about why why do people consider making alterations to the original diet that Dr. Simeon's um, created. The original diet, of course, said no fats or oils on P2. Um, that's the, the low calorie portion of the diet, the part where you're losing weight. If you're not familiar with the HCG diet terminology, um, I do have a whole article that I've linked to in the blog post that goes with this article, and it goes into all the HCG diet terminology to help catch you up to speed. So, but anyway, that was, that was the rule, right? Um, he wrote his manuscript in the 1950s like, or 60s, and, you know, no doubt there are things available now that weren't around at the time that he wrote his protocol. So because of that, that has led some people to wonder if certain modifications are okay to do on the HCG diet. Um, and one of those is coconut oil. So why do people want to use coconut oil on the HCG diet? One um, is that people have reported faster weight loss using coconut oil. Not everyone, but some who use it have reported that. The second reason is that um, it's counted on top of your 500 calories. So it's kind of like having free extra calories um, to the diet. <laughs> so it's like you have your regular 500 calories and then any coconut oil calories are not just not counted. The third reason is that your chicken or salad tastes way better um, with coconut oil. You know, obviously, Simmering your chicken in some coconut oil is just far tastier than coconut oil in water. Um, and the last reason is just that it's, it's something extra that you're, you're being allowed to eat. Um, we're eating so little on the HCG diet, it's very difficult. And um, so being told that there's something extra that's legal, obviously, if it's okay, everyone's going to heartily embrace that, right? Anything to make it easier is going to be something that we're going to want. So the next question then is, why are some people thinking that coconut oil is okay to use on the HCG diet, um, even though other fats and oils are not okay? Coconut oil is kind of different from other fats and oils. It actually contains, um, well, basically 60% of what makes up coconut oil contains what are called MCTs. 
And I don't want to get too scientific on you guys because it's then it gets really confusing. I'm, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as I can. But basically, MCTs are kind of like shorter than normal fat molecules. Most fats and oils are have what are called LCTs, um, which means long chain um, triglycerides or fatty acids, and um, those are they're longer molecules. They're larger. MCTs are medium chain um, fatty acids. They're shorter molecules. Um, and the idea behind how they behave differently in the body, um, I'm just going to actually read you a little quote. These shorter fat molecules, these MCTs, are sent straight to the liver where they're for the most part burned as fuel. Ordinarily, they're not stored to any significant degree as body fat. Um, and that was taken from an article that I've linked to in the post um, by Melt Buttery Spread. Anyway, so in layman's terms, it's kind of like our bodies use MCT as like this immediate energy and it's not processed the same way as other fats. So potentially, potentially it may be okay on HCG. So that's the idea. I've linked to a couple more articles in the blog post. Um, one doc talks about the differences in how our body digests regular fats and how that's different from how it digests coconut oil or the MCTs in coconut oil. And then another one is an article on coconut oil and general weight loss, um, how, that's, how it interacts with your body. Um, and then I have another one just kind of talking about, again, how they're different. One thing that is important to note, though, is that coconut oil is 40% of something that is not allowed on HCG and that everyone will agree is not allowed. Um, as I said before, 60% of what makes up coconut oil is these MCTs, which you know may or may not be okay because the body digests them differently. But that still leaves 40% of something else, right? So 40% of coconut oil is just regular LCTs, the long chain fat molecules that are processed just like butter, olive oil, any other fat. And we all, I think we all agree Having butter or olive oil um, on the HCG diet is, is not cool, okay? So that is one thing that is for sure, that coconut oil does contain 40% of those types of fat molecules um, that definitely are a negative thing on HCG. Okay, so you can tell already that I've been doing a lot of research on this topic. I'm not a savvy scientist, so if I got any of this wrong, you know, please let me know and I'll adjust it. So I just, I try to do my best in doing this type of research. Um, so, moving on, if we break down those ratios of, you know, 60% of something that might be okay and there's 40% that is definitely not okay, um, in one tablespoon of coconut oil, there's a little over 13, yeah, 13.6 grams of fat in one tablespoon of coconut oil. Um, so, if I have my math right, 40% of that, um, or 5.5 grams of fat worth, is just like any other fat, like butter or olive oil, um, which equals not okay on HCG, okay? So in one tablespoon of coconut oil, there's 5.5 grams of fat that we can all agree is not an okay form of fat intake on HCG. Um, the other 60% is that MCT um, molecules, um, and that's a little over eight grams of fat out of the one tablespoon of coconut oil. Um, so that's the portion that is digested differently by the body, going straight to your liver, being burned as fuel. And um, off of HCG, it, it definitely does behave differently in your body. Whether it continues to behave differently in your body when you're on HCG, that is a question that I don't know the answer to. And I, I don't think, I don't know if anyone has the answer to that question at this time. So here's the thing, this is all still theory. What we really need is more proof um, of what's actually going on when we consume coconut oil and HCG. Um, the fact that people are reporting greater weight loss on the scale, to me that doesn't show any proof at all. And what I'm gonna do is actually relate a story to you guys to kinda show you what I mean, okay? So why isn't extra weight loss by using coconut oil on the HCG diet proof that it's a that it's a good thing to do why isn't that enough proof there is a fitness blogger that i love he's actually like a bodybuilder type guy and he recently did an experiment and i've linked to his article in the blog post for seven weeks he he ate healthfully but he stopped doing two things he stopped intermittent fasting um, one to two times a week which is what he usually does 
and he stopped working out and he did that for seven weeks as an experiment. Um, guess what happened? Most of you might think, oh, well, he maybe he gained weight. Um, actually, he didn't gain weight, and in fact, he lost weight on the scale. In that seven-week period, he lost two pounds. So he went down on the scale two pounds. On the surface, it may seem like, hey, you know, good results, right? You have a good outcome. Um, he went to have his body fat tested, though, and he went and had a DEXA scan, which currently DEXA scan is like literally the most accurate way to have your body composition tested. The DEXA scan showed the true results. In that seven week period, even though he lost seven pounds, the test results showed that he had actually lost seven pounds of muscle and he gained five pounds of fat. So, and I think you guys all know that's a, hor a horrible result. <laughs> so, and I was just thinking, man, better him than me. I'm so glad that I was not the uh, guinea pig for that experiment. <laughs> so I think he has the energy, to, he's already fixed it. You know, he's, it's been another two months now, he's already fixed it, he's back to his other body. But um, anyway, I just wanted to relate that experience and you can read his whole, his whole story because I've linked to it. But just to show you guys why the scale is a really poor indicator of what's actually going on in your body. Um, I'm pretty sure most of us, without knowing all the details, we would have thought like, oh, he lost two pounds. His body probably just needed to rest, you know? Um, he knew better, of course. He already knew. His inches increased, um, things like that. He already knew. It was, it was an experiment. Um, but just, I just want to share that with you guys because I think um, for a lot of us women, even myself included in the past, I really did judge my results on the scale. And, and it's, it's just a really bad indicator of what's happening. There could be good things going on that aren't showing up on the scale, and there could be bad things going on that aren't showing up on the scale. So again, that's just um, not a good gauge of whether or not coconut oil is causing better fat loss or not. Um, it could easily be causing muscle loss and you're losing weight on the scale, um, you know? So there's just, there's no way to know that by using just the scale. All right, so going back to the coconut oil and amounts of servings and stuff like that. So in the one tablespoon of coconut oil, which is an, is an amount that a lot of people do use on HCG, it does have that 5.5 grams of fat that, that is LCT, not a long chain, longer molecule, not, not good, just like butter and olive oil, okay? So if you take one tablespoon a day of coconut oil and HCG, 5.5 grams of fat in that is an oil that is a negative thing um, that, that could hamper your results. For me, I, I wouldn't consume it because of that. To me, 5.5 grams of fat, not okay. It is true that we are consuming a very tiny amount of fat on the diet because you know obviously the protein portions that we're eating um, especially if we have like say beef um, or chicken, there is a tiny amount of fat in it. But Dr. Simeons did encourage us to cut off all visible fat and he specifically stated not to use certain meats um, because they had the fat marbled into it um, and that meant that you couldn't cut it out and he said not to use that. So he was pretty serious, you know, when he was talking about um, not having fat on HCG and eliminating it as much as possible for the best results. Um, and I really am inclined to trust him in this regard. Coconut oil does really go a long way though. And so you may easily, maybe you don't need a whole tablespoon. You know, you could probably easily get away with just one teaspoon of coconut oil a day. Um, unless of course you make chocolate delight with it and eat one too many. And then obviously you could see how you could easily get way out of hand with eating far too much coconut oil. Um, that can easily happen with chocolate delight. So, but in one teaspoon of coconut oil, it has just 1.8 grams of the fat that we agree is not good for HCG. So that amount, you know, 1.8 grams of fat, that's pretty small, right? So that may be considered small enough by some to, to experiment with. You know, they might choose to go ahead and include one teaspoon since it has a very small amount of fat that we're sure isn't good. It's, it's very tiny. So they may choose to experiment with that. The real question though that I have is, does the MCT portion of coconut oil, the 60% that, that might be not bad or might even be beneficial, does it really get processed differently by the body on HCG? Um, does it really, you know, 
cause more fat loss or does it at least not hamper it? Um, does it not cause excess muscle loss? To me, that's the real question. And I think it's an important question and I don't know the answer to it, you know? I, I don't know the answer to it. Um, which is why in the end for myself, I'd rather be safe than sorry, you know? Many of you guys know Robin Woodall. She wrote the excellent book on the HCG protocol called Weight Loss Apocalypse. There's a link to it in the article. Um, she actually did make a short YouTube video talking about HCG and coconut oil. Um, she doesn't really actually give a specific, she basically says she doesn't know either, but you might want to watch the video, which I've linked to, because um, she does give some food for thought. Um, she basically said that consuming coconut oil is not going to make us burn more calories um, to the extent that basically it's not going to make you burn enough more calories so as to outweigh the calories in the coconut oil itself okay so like say you eat a tablespoon of coconut oil and that contains um, you know 120 calories or something like that you're not going to burn more than that just by ingesting it I don't, does that make sense? And also I linked to another article um, on tnation.com and his article confirms that. Um, the most significant part of what he said, I'm going to read it to you, is that, um, and this is off HCG by the way, the researchers found that by switching to MCTs, the total energy expenditure of the subjects in this study um, increased by 50%. While this might sound amazing, that sounds like, wow, 50% more, um, the actual increase in calories burned was a paltry 25 calories. Hardly significant if you consider that to get as many MCTs as was used in the study, you'd need to ingest three tablespoons of coconut oil. Three tablespoons of coconut oil has, I think, around 360 calories, and it said that the participants burned an extra 25 calories. So anyway, I hope that makes it clear. Sometimes the way things are worded can be deceiving, um, but obviously they weren't, they were burning far less than what they took in, in the calories of the coconut oil. So um, I hope that that makes sense. So why do we have to think about this anyway? You know, why, why is fat such a big deal on the HCG diet? Um, basically, the HCG hormone makes fat very volatile and more accessible and that's whether it's from inside your body or from outside your body. So we know that for some reason <laughs> the way the HCG interacts with our body it causes us to lose weight far more quickly than a regular diet and a lot larger portion of the weight lost is fat versus muscle. So really, again, you know, fat is very volatile. Um, and the other reason that you know that this is true is because people have seen that um, they can gain weight on HCG very easily, um, which would not be the case on another diet. Um, if you eat, say, a thousand calories on HCG, you will either maintain your weight or you'll gain weight and you won't lose weight. Um, which if you were not on HCG, that's not what would happen. If I started eating 800 calories tomorrow, I would start losing weight um, or 1,000 calories. I'd start losing weight. So when you're on HCG, it just completely changes the dynamics of what's going on in your body. I don't actually know exactly what's going on, and I don't know that Dr. Simeons did either. He, you know, he didn't expound on it, and I don't know that he, he really knew. But the fact is, it does that. So because of that, that's why whether or not we use coconut oil on HCG is kind of a, a big issue in a sense, just because you know we obviously want the best outcome um, for our body. We want to make sure that the outcome is a healthy one, and um, for whatever reason, fat, you know, outside or inside our body is is just much more volatile than in regular life. So there's two reasons that you might choose not to have coconut oil. The first is that there's just simply not enough proof at this time. Um, to show that it's a safe thing to do. It's very possible that it's causing excess muscle loss or that it is it could even cause fat gain. Um, I don't know the answer to that. And so, you know, you might want to just take the safe road and ensure your results. That might be one reason. The second reason you might choose not to have coconut oil and HCG is because even if a tiny amount was okay, um, how many of you have used coconut oil on HCG and ended up having 
you know, more than you should. Um, I've done it and you probably have done it. So um, it's one of those things that might be tougher to control. And if that's the case, it might just be better to leave it out. So let's say that a small amount of coconut oil um, is okay on HCG. How, how could you go about it then um, to do it in the most, you know, in the safest, healthiest way? The first thing might be you might choose to actually use MCT oil instead of coconut oil. MCT oil is just that, just MCTs. Now remember we talked about with coconut oil, only 60% of coconut oil is MCTs. 40% of it is definitely not good fat on HCG. So if you used MCT oil instead, it would be completely all the MCTs. Um, keep in mind, obviously it is processed, it's not like a whole a whole food in the sense that, you know, MCT oil doesn't, it's not occurring in nature like that, um, like olive oil or, or coconut oil. So it's been processed so that it, all that it is is MCT oil. Additionally, it does not have the same um, like taste or flavor as coconut oil. It kind of doesn't really have a taste. Um, some people don't care for it. So it's not necessarily going to add anything like yummy um, to your meals. Um, so if you did use MCT oil, most people would use it purely for the experiment effect to see if it somehow um, made something good happen. But you could do that. The second thing would be to, if you are going to use coconut oil, just be very aware of the amount that you're using. Most chocolate delight recipes involve using one whole cup of coconut oil. Um, and obviously this is for multiple servings, right? <laughs> Okay, I want to do a little flashback to a past HCG Chica blunder and um, just to share what can happen and why it's so important to decide if, if, if you're capable of having self-control um, in, in, in this topic. Um, I made a modified chocolate delight recipe once. It was actually Hebby Dobby's lemon truffle recipe and I've linked to it in the blog post because she made it up. It's delicious beyond words and it's a fantastic P3 and P4 choice um, for like an alternative sweet. It's, it's so, so good. <laughs> anyway, I made it for P2 once in my second round and it had a whole cup of coconut butter in it. Coconut butter is not coconut oil, but it still has a lot of fat. It had a whole cup of coconut butter and I ate the whole plate in one day. It was supposed to last for many days, but they were so good I kept opening the fridge, eating one or two more, and before you knew it, the whole plate was gone. Um, I wanna show you guys what I ended up consuming that day. Um, one cup of coconut butter has 136 grams of fat. 40% of that was from fat grams that are LCTs, the fat that's not good on HCG. And that means that I ate, ate, ugh, that I ate over 54 grams of bad fat on HCG in one day. Um, and you know, obviously that wasn't my intention. <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't, definitely didn't plan on doing that. And you know, you might be thinking, well, I wouldn't do that. I'd, you know, make it and just eat one or two. Um, and if you can do that, great. But just keep in mind when you're on the diet and you're not hardly eating anything and all of a sudden there's this food item that is all of a sudden legal. There's no specific serving size allowed. You know, like with meat, it's like, oh, 100 grams. That's all I'm allowed. So that's what you eat. With the coconut oil, there, there's no particular serving size. You know, the calories aren't included in the 500. Um, so it's kind of like left up to you to decide how much you're going to have of it. And it tastes so good. If you combine all those things, it's, it's really easy to get out of hand with it. Now, if we go back to chocolate delight recipes using coconut oil, um, one cup of coconut oil has 218 grams of fat total. Um, the 40% of that, that is definitely a negative thing on HCG equals to 87 grams of fat. Now, whether you eat that over the course of your entire round, or whether you eat that all in one day. <laughs> Although I'm pretty sure most of us won't consume a whole cup of coconut oil in one day. But anyway, um, 
as you can see, there, there's 87 grams of fat in that coconut oil and in one recipe that has one cup of coconut oil um, that won't be good for you. So in the 40 days you're on the protocol, if you only used one recipe's worth, there is gonna be 87 grams of fat that um, isn't a good thing and that your body may have been able to use your own fat instead, that now it's not. So I hope that kind of puts it in perspective. Um, now earlier we discussed that one teaspoon of coconut oil has just 1.8 grams of, um, of the technical bad fat on HCG. So again, for some, they might decide that that's a tiny enough amount that they're willing to experiment with that to see what happens. Now there's 48 teaspoons in one cup of coconut oil. So if you make a chocolate delight recipe and you only wanna have one teaspoon of coconut oil a day, that recipe should technically last you 48 days. So if you've done Chocolate Delight before, ask yourself that, did it last you that long? <laughs> if the recipe only lasted you two weeks, I wrote this down, um, that means you consumed 3.5 teaspoons of coconut oil each day during those two weeks, and that equals to 6.3 grams of the technical bad fats per day on HCG that you're taking in. If you ate the whole recipe in one week, that would actually be seven teaspoons of coconut oil a day um, which equals 12.6 grams of the bad fats on HCG per day. So that, that's really adding up, you know? Um, so basically in a nutshell, if you decide to experiment with coconut oil, um, keep it minimal and be honest with yourself with how you're gonna use it. Um, for instance, if I were gonna use coconut oil on the diet, I probably wouldn't do it with Chocolate Delight or the lemon truffles because I already know myself and I know that I'm gonna end up consuming way more than I plan to. Um, however, when it comes to sauteing you know, my chicken or my shrimp um, or putting it in some salad dressing, I know that I could control the amount of coconut oil there and I could, you know, okay, like limit myself to, okay, I'm gonna try one teaspoon a day and I'm, that's all I'm gonna use in my cooking for that day for the meat and the salad dressing. Um, that I could easily control. I wouldn't be like, oh, I need more coconut oil in my meat. You know, I, I wouldn't do that. So for me, that would be the best way to do it. Um, whereas again, if I did the chocolate delight recipe as has happened in times past, I, I would definitely eat too much of it. Um, and before I knew it, I would be consuming, you know, tablespoons and tablespoons of coconut oil. So, so that's how I would do it. Um, so just be honest with yourself when it comes to that, if you decide to experiment, because um, the diet is hard and you need to decide if you are mentally and emotionally responsible enough to, to handle the chocolate delight option. Um, and I, I don't think I am, so. <sighs> All right, so that's pretty much the whole discussion. Um, you know, there's no judgment here, you guys, if you decide to experiment with coconut oil. You know, a ton of people use it on HCG. I, I probably almost, I would probably even go so far as to say the majority of people um, try it at one point or another. So, you know, I don't judge you guys if you do that. It, you decide. I don't know if it's a good thing or not. Um, I, I tend to be more on the cautious side just because I'm so concerned with the outcome of the results. But as far as those who are adamant about saying that um, their results have not been you know, hampered by the HCG diet, they're usually basing that on their scale weight loss results. And as we've talked about, that's actually not a reliable indicator of what's actually happening in your body. So just, just do remember that. So as far as my feelings on it go, the kind of proof that I feel I would need to be able to confidently tell you guys, like, break out your coconut jars, guys, and dig in, you know? Um, for me to feel comfortable saying that and for me to use it myself on HCG in the future, um, the experiment that I would wanna see is a person who uses coconut oil every day on the HCG protocol and who does a hydrostatic body fat testing before and after their round. Um, and if their fat loss to muscle loss ratio was in keeping with the kinds of results that I've seen and that I've had, um, which is usually that there should be like 80 to 90% fat um, being lost. It, it, some of that depends on how overweight you are. There, there's always variables, but I have experienced 80 to 90% fat loss and so have others. So for me, it's like if the person having coconut oil had the same results 
at that point I would be more like yeah this this sounds like it's not hurting anything maybe it's even helping let's you know go ahead and go ahead and do it the problem is I'm not willing to be the guinea pig for this <laughs> so I've thought about it on occasion but it's just you know like that fitness blogger guy who lost seven pounds and gave five pounds of fat like I just to me I, I'm not willing to do an experiment like that <laughs> It's just too much hard work to fix and I'm just I don't feel well enough to do that So so if there's someone else who's willing to be that guinea pig and you want to do that hydrostatic body fat testing um, It has to be either hydrostatic body fat testing or DEXA scan um, Anything else bod pod might be okay, but you know, you can't can't use the scale or the Omron. That's just not not um, accurate enough, but if you want to do that, let me know I, I would definitely you know, I mean, to be honest, I really would love to tell you guys that, yes, this is, you know, confidently, this is a good thing to do and it doesn't hurt and it might even help. Um, I wish I could say that because, yes, the diet's hard, you know, and um, yeah, I mean, it would just be great if it could be easier. So, but I just, I just don't have proof of that. So anyway, that's my take on it. I hope that was helpful. You guys can find me on Facebook, HCG Chica. Um, I have a fairly active page. I post there fairly frequently, usually every day. So you can check me out there. And if you have any questions, you can post them in the comments below. I always like to hear from you guys. I like keeping in touch with the community. That's it. Take care. Bye. like my new boots I want to show you oh wait here, wait, here, 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 here. look aren't they so cute it's starting to be fall and I needed a new pair of comfy boots so I got these at REI and they're so comfortable I feel all cute in them too <laughs> all right uh, let's move on let's see the second reason that you might choose not to have coconut oil on HCG is because why is it 